Hey, good evening. Welcome to Finals One News Evening Edition. I'm Mike Stevens. Glad you're with us. We're going to check your top stories for you in just a moment. First, though, let's check in with Finals One meteorologist John Heyman. John? All right, thank you, John. Now to our top story for this hour. It's official after weeks of speculation. Former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani is not running for the U.S. Senate or the governor's office in New York. Files 1's Damali Woolley explains why. All right, Tamani, thank you. Now, former Mayor Giuliani says although he is not running for office in 2010, he is not ruling out another political run in the future. Nassau County Executive-elect Edmund Gano and Suffolk County Executive Steve Levy have teamed up to help both counties. Steve Levy and Edmund Gano are from two different counties and different political parties, but as they met in Hopon today, they say they have one thing on their mind. Most of the snow that dumped on us over the weekend has been removed, but with temperatures just over the freezing point, drivers are concerned now about black ice. Some of the snow left on the roadways began to melt yesterday. Road crews are continuing to work at trying to get a handle on the slick spots. Emergency crews recommend drivers to still take it easy today. Take it slow. Give yourself plenty of space between you and the car that's in front of you. A Brentwood man who beat his girlfriend's seven-year-old son nearly to death faces a steep prison sentence. A Suffolk judge sentenced 32-year-old Louis Rivera to 16 years to life in prison. Rivera, who previously had served prison time for assault and weapons possession, pled guilty in November to beating 7-year-old Jordan Moore at his girlfriend's home. Jordan had no pulse for almost an hour after the April beating. The boy suffered a lacerated liver and other injuries, returned home, and attends school now, but faces possible permanent medical problems. A homeless man is dead, and it looks like it's because of frigid temperatures. Police say 56-year-old Timothy Bryant was well known on the streets of Newcastle. He was often seen pushing a shopping cart full of aluminum cans and scrap metal, which he turned in for money. Bryant was found lying face down in the snow yesterday by two men cutting through the Grand Street School parking lot on their way to work. Medical examiners believe the death appears to have been caused by exposure from the cold. A cash crunch could threaten the Belmont Stakes, putting the final leg of the famous Triple Crown at stake. The New York Racing Association says Belmont Park is in trouble because the state has not approved video slot machines at the Aqueduct Racetrack. Without those machines, the Racing Association says it will need another $30 million to save the racing season, which includes the Belmont Stakes. The owners of Eddie's Pizza Restaurant in New Hyde Park are giving back to the community. Today, they played Santa Claus to the residents of the Stern Center for Extended Care. They donated a 42-inch flat-screen TV, dozens of DVDs, and, of course, lots of pizza. And still to come on Verizon's Fire Swan News, the Senate rises even before the sun does for another key test on national health care reform. We're going to tell you how they voted just ahead on Fire Swan News. Welcome back to Files 1 News. I'm Mike Stevens. New information now from Washington State where two police officers were shot overnight. Officials from the Pierce County Sheriff's Department say the two officers were responding to a domestic call between two brothers. When the officers got there, they were apparently greeted by one brother while the other was inside the house arming himself. Both officers were shot several times. They were able to return fire and kill the shooter. Those officers are now in critical condition at different hospitals in Tacoma. This is the same county where four police officers from a different department were shot and killed three weeks ago as they were waiting to begin their shift. Two down, one to go. The health care bill has passed another 60-vote test in the Senate. Democrats remain united early this morning as they started voting, pushing toward their goal of passing President Obama's health care overhaul by Christmas. With not a vote to spare, the Senate voted 60 to 39 to shut off debate on Majority Leader Harry Reid's version of the bill. An earlier vote to approve a 400-page package of changes that sealed Democratic support for the bill also passed 60 to 39. No Republicans voted in favor of it. Democrats must pass another 60-vote test tomorrow before they vote on final passage expected to come on Christmas Eve. While Democrats have gone back and forth trying to secure the 60 votes they need, a new report shows the American people haven't really followed Congress's dramatic swings. A poll by the nonpartisan Robert Wood Foundation shows 82 percent believe reforming the health care system is important for recharging the economy, and that number has remained steady since April. A researcher with the foundation also says that a person's health care concerns are not affected by their personal circumstances as much as what's going on in Washington. When it comes to parking in New York City, every second counts. 
So now, thanks to the City Council, there is a short grace period for people who park at expired meters. The new law gives drivers an extra five minutes past the expired time on some meters and parking signs before they can be ticketed. Supporters say ticket riders are too aggressive in giving violations, some just one minute after the meter expires. Mayor Michael Bloomberg ex opposed the uh, plan and says it will lead to what he called chaos. Time now for your forecast of the FIES meteorologist John Heyman in the FIOS Weather Center. John? And we have a lot more coming up on FIOS One News. Melanoma skin cancer is on the rise across the country, and some groups who once thought they were safe may have to rethink that assumption. Your health report coming up next on FIOS One News. Melanoma skin cancer is on the rise in the United States, but not all racial and ethnic groups have the same risk. Researchers say the people who most need to know about this deadly form of cancer may not be getting the message. More in today's Final One Medical Minute. Melanoma cases have increased over the past decade, especially among white populations. This skin cancer is quite treatable if caught early, but life-threatening once it starts to spread. Much of the public education regarding melanoma has focused on Caucasian people because they have a higher risk for developing the disease. White skin is more vulnerable to the sun's rays and ultraviolet exposure is a risk factor for melanoma. But this doesn't mean that people with darker skin are safe. New research from the University of Miami finds melanoma incidence is rising in Hispanic people as well. And more troubling, minority patients were at greater risk for advanced disease. Doctors found just 4.5% of white patients were diagnosed with melanoma that had spread to other parts of the body compared to more than 8% of Hispanic patients and nearly 15% of African American patients. They say all people, regardless of skin color, should examine their skin regularly. Any moles that are raised, asymmetrical, or bleeding should be checked out immediately by a doctor. Now, melanomas can develop anywhere on the body, but most often show up in areas that have had exposure to the sun, such as your back, your legs, your arms, and your face. You're going to want to check with a dermatologist for more information on what melanomas can look like. And we have a lot more coming up on Fios One News today, including relief for stranded airline passengers. Soon new changes will limit how long airlines can keep loaded planes stranded on the tarmac. That's ahead on Fios One News and only on Verizon. Yahoo is cutting costs during the holidays and big changes to how airlines will operate. Those are just some of the stories making headlines in today's business report with Files One Stone Grissom. <laughs> Stocks have extended their rally into a third day after a surprisingly strong report on housing. Investors found encouragement in a report from the National Association of Realtors that home resales jumped 7.4 percent in November. So here's a final look on your numbers today. The uh, Dow gained 50 points, closing at 10,464. The Nasdaq rose 15 points, ending at 2,252. And the S&P up nearly four points, closing at 1,118. Time now for your forecast on the FIES meteorologist John Heyman in the FIOS Weather Center. John? Well, finally in this hour, let's look ahead to some of the stories we're following for upcoming editions of Files One News. Former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani has endorsed former Congressman Rick Lazio for a governor. Long Island's Belmont Stakes are at stake. The famed third leg of the Triple Crown is in jeopardy if the state doesn't approve new video slot machines, we're told. And a health care reform bill is one step closer to reality after the Senate passes its second test vote. I'm Mike Stevens. We thank you for watching. We have more news, weather, and traffic ahead on Files One News, and it's only on Verizon.